And GOP Indiana Senator Mike Braun, member of the Senate Budget Committee. Good morning to you. Hey, morning. Good morning, Senator. So we're looking at the president's approval ratings this morning in real clear politics. They take the average of all of the popular polls and they put them together. And this is what they came up with. His approval rating for the first time is under 40 percent, 39.8. Look how many people disapprove. Almost 55 percent or 54.4 percent don't like what he's doing. Why do you think that is? Is it COVID? Is it immigration? Is it Afghanistan? Is it all of it? I'm surprised it took this long for those poll numbers to finally reflect what I see when I travel through Indiana. When I got here a little over three years ago and I look at uh, pre-COVID, I look at the reasons I ran uh, because we were trying to maybe do some things with government to make it more effective. There's buyer's remorse out there, and you just mentioned all the reasons. And any one or two of these could get you down into poll numbers that aren't good when you got a midterm looming. My point is, we've been dished up a menu of deplorables in terms of what is going on currently, and what are we gonna do with it as Republicans? And I think that is the key variable. Independents are almost in lockstep with us on all these issues. That's important. Normally they're in the middle. But yes, finally the truth comes out, just like it does when you have bad policies on vaccinations and some of the things they've been trying to ram through based upon not the science, but their political science. So I think it's just all coming home to roost. Senator, among the issues that Ainsley rattled off that could be taking Joe Biden's poll numbers, and the answer is probably all of the above, but this one at the top of the list is the January inflation numbers are predicted to come in at 7.3%. Let's compare that to when Joe Biden took office when it was 1.4%. What I'd like to ask you, though, is how do we move forward? How do we find a solution to an issue that is really at the top of most Americans list when it comes to priorities for someone to solve? What can Republicans do? Should you take back power in the midterm elections at the end of 2022? What can you do to tame inflation? So for the Biden administration and the Democrats, when you're trying to sell the Kool-Aid of more government, more regulations, when I got in here three years ago, 18 trillion in debt, last week we just uh, crossed 30 trillion. So for Republicans to take this opportunity, remember the independents elect swing state senators and the presidency. We've got everything dished up to do it. I don't think we can be the party of no, or we're not interested. We need to bring small, effective government solutions to the key issues out there. And when you look to see what those are, take a cue from the people that are gonna determine who's gonna win the swing state senators. And they want you to get down to but, you know, basic stuff, uh, instead of all the stuff they've trotted out as Democrats, we at least have to pick a couple issues and look at what was working in the Trump economy, uh, record low inflation, wages were going up the old fashioned way without government being the driver. We need to look probably no further than what was working there and then maybe get involved in the real difficult issues like lowering the cost of health care. Uh, for conservatives, I keynoted the young Republicans in my home state of uh, Indiana at Indianapolis. They wanted Republicans that at least have some small uh, government approach to maybe an issue like climate. If we stay away from the difficult issues, it'll come back to where we give the political enterprisers, the Democrats, an opportunity to do something even more damaging down the road. Well, so, uh, so far, one of the biggest surprises is uh, the, starting really with New Jersey. There are nine separate Democratic states, to some degree, have rolled back the ma uh, mass mandates and some restrictions. Cases are down 47 uh, percent. Every state is seeing a decrease. Hospitalizations down about 20 percent over the last uh, seven days. That's going in the right direction. And as predicted, uh, it is falling with this Omicron vi variant. And I bring you back to one quote. John Carney, the governor of Delaware, Democrat, says a leader without follower followers is not a very effective leader. You have to strike the balance to keep people following you. The president is losing Democrats. He is in cement on these issues. What's the responsible way forward, Senator? Hey, follow the cues again. Uh, Virginia, 
a blue state. Look what Yunkin did there by just saying, listen to the parents. They are the stakeholders in education. We have got all that stuff to work with. Then, as Republicans, do we run with that in a national way? So uh, I don't think the Democrats can recover between now and November, even if they try to offer more free stuff and Kool-Aid from the federal government. It's what we do with our own platform to take advantage of this rare opportunity of so many things working pre-COVID during the Trump administration. There's big buyer's remorse with the Biden administration. But Senator, real quick, yeah. I know you're pushing for natural immunity to count. Yep. Everybody's pushing. We have 64% vaccinated Americans, much higher if you go 12 and up. So when you talk about natural immunity, Hopkins comes out with that study that says natural immunity is good, if not better, than the vaccinated immunity. What are you pushing Congress to do? So we've got a bill out there that would actually say recognize that. Sadly, it'll be about messaging, but it'll also be reinforcing what you're seeing in the blue states where the governors are saying all this nonsense from Fauci, uh, general lockdowns. John Hopkins just recently said the mortality rate wasn't impacted hardly at all by lockdowns. One size fits all. This top down approach to this doesn't make sense. And we just need to reinforce it. We won't get anything through because we won't get any Democrats for it. But messaging into November is important and we just need to stay on point. Why are the Democrats so hesitant to recognize natural immunity? They do it in Israel and it works. But think about the 18,000 that will lose their jobs in L.A., the thousands of firefighters and people who work for the government in New York City on Friday that will lose their jobs. What if they've had COVID? What if they've had COVID twice? What if they have, if their antibodies are strong and stronger than a boosted person's? Why don't they recognize that? Well, it's for the simple reason, remember, when they took over, uh, you had Harris, Biden saying, we'll never take the Trump vaccine. Then they ran with it, and then they tried to sell that as the only solution, ignoring therapeutics, ignoring other methods, listening to what was actually working. They are good at that. The, they control the you know, dialogue out there, and they think they can flip flop from this to that and still make sense with the American public. Uh, it's because they do it naturally. And when they have a narrative, they do not let up on it. And we got to make sure that we don't let them try to recast what's actually happened because the science is coming out. They rely on political science and using the media to reinforce bad decisions and then flip flop the other way. And hope we buy it. Senator, what do you make of the shift taking place right now? Numerous blue states across this country are suddenly loosening their mask mandates, loosening their COVID restrictions. At the same time, in many of those same states, for example, New York, kids are still going to school required to wear a mask every day. We had a conversation a little bit earlier with some moms who are pushing back on those mandates. Let's watch this. Then I want to get your take on what exactly is taking place right now. I think it's barbaric, it's anti-science, and it is completely politically motivated. Masks in the classroom have created these incredible divides. It's almost like they're socially isolated still. You know, while adults have gone on, we're, we're seeing Gavin Newsom, AOC, and all of the, you know, great champions of, you know, human rights out there uh, hobnobbing and enjoying themselves, and the kids, like, they completely forget them every single day. We should have protected them and had them supersede politics, but partisanship won and the kids lost. Senator, that first mother you heard from is an Upper West Side reliable Democrat. You can hear her now saying her vote's up for grabs. So is that is that the explanation as we see these states starting to move? Is it simply, obviously not the movement of science, but the movement of polls? Thank goodness there's a difference between San Francisco, L.A., and New York City. You're getting into where uh, sometimes practical solutions, common sense, just watching what's been happening. You're going to lose a lot of the blue states for the same reason of what we saw in Virginia. Sooner or later, you got to bail out on bad ideas. Uh, those hardcore centers of liberalism, progress, uh, progressive ideas, they they may hold on to it. The rest of the country is going to move on, including blue states and state governments. Senator, you have a situation in your party where the issues that the president has come up with make your policies look better and better. 
but it doesn't seem like you guys can get out of your own way. On Friday, the RNC censuring two Republicans, the vice president, the former vice president, telling the president, former president that he was wrong, the president, uh, Donald Trump, going after Mitch McConnell. Are you guys trying to lose the midterms? You know, that kind of infighting and making unforced errors, uh, making a statement like the RNC did without maybe qualifying it uh, for the ones that breached the Capitol, brawled with the police, then you got to come back. Democrats love that because that switches the attention to us. And like I said earlier, we've got to be out there focused on some real good ideas to appeal to the people that determine these midterm elections in the swing states and avoid that as much as possible. I don't think they can use even those kinds of miscues because their record, their agenda is so bad in this last year. You might be right. All right, Senator, thank you so much for coming on with us. My pleasure.